Welcome to the Noise App walkthrough video. This video is to assist you with creating an account on the UK's number one community safety reporting app. This app allows you to submit evidence of the community safety issues that you are facing to your housing provider. Once downloaded onto your device, you will be presented with the screen to either sign in or create an account and select the country that you reside in. The first step that you will then be presented with is when to use the Noise app. And there are some important notices and guidance here for you to read through in your own time. You will then need to pop in your email address. This would be the email that you would be using through the duration of using the Noise app. You then need to type in the reporting organization name. So this would be the local authority or housing association that you wish to submit your reports to. Then just simply type in your first and last name, your contact number, your postcode of where you reside, and select from the drop down list. If you do not see your address on this list, you have the ability to enter the address manually with the link underneath. You then need to create your password. This must contain at least eight characters, including one digit, one upper and lowercase letter, and one special character. Once you've created your accounts, you'll be presented with the screen, which asks you to check your email. This is important that we can verify your account and will then allow you to log in to the Noise app. Once you've confirmed your account, simply open up the app and select sign in. Type in the email address that you've registered with, as well as the password. You will be presented also with the forgotten your password link, should you need to use that at any stage. Once you sign in, you'll then see the terms of service. You would need to read through these and agree to them in order to continue. We've then provided some information on how best to use the Noise app. This contains device positioning, microphone positioning, and how best to record the noise. Once you've gone through that onboarding process, you'll be presented with the case diary. This shows you that you currently have no open cases, and so you would need to create a new case to begin gathering your evidence. It will have remembered the reporting organisation that you selected during the onboarding process, but should you need to search for a new organisation, you have the ability to do so. As you can see, you will need to tap on the screen to start the recording and then tap to stop. The recording must be at least five seconds. If you are happy with the recording, you can then continue to the next step. But as you can see, you can review it here before doing so. And if you'd like to retake, it will discard the recording you previously recorded. You are then asked for your property address. This is where you reside. You would have entered this upon the onboarding process, but for any reason, if you need to add a new one, you can do so here. Importantly, the next step is the source address, so where the noise is coming from. If you know the postcode of the property, please type this in here. Alternatively, you can select from the map and you can move the map for the pin to drop. Once you've done that, it will provide the address information of where you've got the pin and you can continue to the next step. What is the noise source? You'll see a list of commonly used noise sources across the Noise app. However, we do also have other noise sources available underneath. The same applies in terms of the commonly used locations. This is where you are when you're recording the noise. And then you have duration. So at this step, you need to select how long the noise has been going on for up to that point. With the intensity, this allows you to scroll the bar from 0 to 10, 10 being that it's affecting you greatly, and you must move this in order to go to the next step. You can then provide some additional information to support your case. You can add in a comment. This can be as the example shows above or anything you think would help with your case. Should your organization that you're reporting to have a subscription to our premium service, you will also be able to attach pictures and videos. And that is up to five pieces of media per report. As you can see, you can take a new picture, video, or select from the gallery. 
This will depend on the preferences set by the organisation you're reporting to. Finally, you hit the submission screen. This has an overview of the information that you've collated to this point regarding this report. You do have the ability to amend any of this should you have made an error along the way. Just simply tap on the pencil icon to make your changes. Once back on the submission screen, you just need to declare that the information you've provided is correct to the best of your knowledge and press submit. You will then be presented with this screen informing you that your report has been submitted to the reporting organisation and should they have a what happens next message in place for you, you will then be provided with some information on what to do next. When back on the case diary screen, you will be presented with a list of ongoing cases that you've reported to date. These will be listed by the source address as well as the reporting organisation you are submitting to. To tap into the case itself to look at what you've recorded so far, you just select on the chevron and you'll be presented with this screen. You can then select on each individual report to see the information you've provided. If you wish to add a new report against this case, you simply select add new report. You do have the ability to add a new address if you scroll to the bottom of the screen, and that would be that you are reporting a second or third property. In notifications, this will be listed by the individual cases you've submitted, and you'll be presented with a screen showing you how many new status updates or new messages have been submitted into the case. If you select on the chevron, you'll see information on that that has been submitted, whether it was a status change or a message, and you will be able to re respond to your report and organisation using the text field underneath and pressing send. In settings, this is where you can update your personal settings. This would be your name, contact number, email, or where you can update your password if you need to change that for any reason. In help and support, you have the when to use the app information, which you were presented with upon onboarding, how to use the app. You also have the option to contact our support team by selecting the Chevron next to support. It will open up a draft email for you where it will be directed straight to our team who will respond to you within 48 hours. In data request, this confirms that your reporting organisation is your data controller and therefore any data request should be directed to them directly. You also have the ability to view our terms of service should you wish. In the about section, this gives you information on the version of the app that you are using as well as the terms of service and our, our accessibility statement. You can then sign out of the app if you wish and then sign back in when you need to use it again. For any other queries that you might have, please contact us on support at thenoiseapp.com. Thank you.